G'day. Um, recently I had a, uh, a job to do for a customer to fit um, was it 32 um, BNC connectors onto a plate that I've designed up from to adapt from SMC, no, SMB it was, uh, silly little things that they were damaging in the field so I suggested that they uh, mount it on a plate and put some cables in between to adapt it and uh, it'll solve their problem of broken SMB connectors which are, a couple of which I've replaced over the years. Anyway here we go I started off with this plate I then added uh, a BNC uh, D-shaped hole I then uh, positioned a sketch to um, to align all the text that I was going to put on this plate uh, the customer wanted each port numbered 1 to 32 so I came up with this idea of um, this little pattern here of little lines aligned to the center and above each of the holes I then added a, a linear pattern in the vertical direction and then uh, what I do I patterned the pattern which gave me the 32 holes uh, I then added the text where are we if I right click on here we get unsuppress it takes a little while because there's a bit of processing to do and there is the text uh, if I get in a bit closer if I take this one for example edit the sketch All right. and then if you double click on each one you can see here for example that's port number 10 the, the text is center justified on the line it, uh, underneath the, uh, the number 10 here uh, and I'm using document font which is some sort of Swiss something or other I can't remember but it's two and a half millimeters high. It need to be fairly small to fit between all the connectors. So uh, that's what I did. And I had to do these one at a time. I had to do number one, then number two, number three, etc. Right down to uh, number where are we? Number 32 down the bottom here. Okay. So if I kill all that. It takes quite a while to do all this calculation. There we go. So that's uh, basically it. This one here. Uh, rebuild this is. Okay. So this is what the finished product's going to look like um, with um, the number of each port just above each one there. It doesn't show very clearly, but uh, you get the idea. And there's cables here, they're about 100 millimeters overall length of these cables that go down to the original customer interface. And this standoff's uh, about 50, 50 millimeters long, um, brings it out to the correct position so that the customer never has to do this mating under here again. They just mate on these simple connectors here, much more robust than SMB connectors. So, if I go to this plate here and go to the cam side of things, uh, looks like it wants me to regenerate this thing. Okay, first of all, it, you know, I bored these holes. Uh, to pick up where the standoffs go. Then I um, created a, a count contour cut for this um, first port here. And then what I did was I patterned it. So if I go to if I edit the pattern, and the pattern is simply based on edge one with uh, eight instances 17 millimeters apart and edge two up here there are four instances uh, 18 millimeters apart and the interesting uh, the important thing here is to uh, 
preserve the order otherwise the thing jumps all over the place and makes a very inefficient code but uh, if you preserve the order it does it in exactly the order I want it to to, um, to cut the those holes out. Uh, then we go to the engraving of the text it uh, once again if I edit this the Taking a while because there's a fair bit of calculation going on here. Uh, where are we? I had to preserve the order here too, otherwise it would do this one and then it'd come down here and do that one and then it'd go over here and do that one. It was all over the place. So if you preserve the order, it did it exactly as I wanted it one, two, three, four, five, six, and then to do, um, and then I came across here and then 16. Yeah. Uh, 15, 14, etc. And this was the most efficient code I could uh, come up with. All right. So uh, let's have a look at the simulation on this one. Simulate this one. And if I get rid of the toolpath and I show the stock. I show the stock being transparent and what happens if I press the button and away she goes it needs to be speeded up a bit so it does one, two, three, etc. The bit I'm using is a, a one eighth of an inch it's got 60 degree tip on it, solid carbide 60 degree V on it and I've Point 0.3 or point something or other across the tip cheap things I buy from China um, and it, it, it worked out quite well so uh, I think uh, that's about it oh I'll just uh, hit it this where are we I just wanted to show you the tool um, the tool is from my library. What I did here was I uh, created this tool based on a on a spot drill, uh, and you can see I bought it from eBay. It's uh, 3.125, 60 degree, uh, and um, if we edit that, its description is put in there, vendors put in there. The cutter itself is defined here, oh that's right, the tip diameter is 0.2 of a millimetre across there. Uh, it's actually across the bottom here at a little slight angle but I couldn't simulate that. Um, and the tip angle was 60 degrees and you can see that it's actually 60 degrees. Uh, feeds and speeds, well that's limited by my machine maximum. RPM for my machine is 3400 and this is all calculated automatically. Two flutes. Not really. I think it's actually one flute. Oops, wrong way. Try going, and I'll go OK. So it's actually a single flute cutter, not a dual flute cutter. Let's see how this thing cuts. Roving effect from the uh, lead light that I've got there.
pretty busy in there.